So now let's pre prepare for meditation. Our thoughts, our prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts, our prayers, listen to what you're saying. Speak a higher consciousness. A state of peacefulness And know that God is always there And every thought becomes a in now deep breath in and hold it for just a moment hold it now and then slowly exhale it and begin to relax begin to settle in begin to let peace allow peace to flow through your body now peace and i are one breathing in now breathing out focusing on the breath allowing yourself to slip away from the daily this and the daily that for, for a few moments and take some time for you. Take some time to clear your mind, to clear your thoughts, knowing that our thoughts are prayers. So we slowly, slowly now settle in Settle into clearing our mind, relaxing our body, allowing love to flow through us now. Love. Love. I invite you to know love. To right now, open your heart and open your mind to love. For love is always there. Love is always there. And so love surrounds us now. If you're willing, if you're willing, allow love to surround you, to flow in through you and out from you. And become aware of that love surrounding you, that love flowing in you and through you. As you become aware of it, you realize it's always there. Love is always there. Even when we forget, love is there. 
love flows through me now, this present moment. I am love. Breathing in and breathing out. In the midst of love, I'm claiming my divinity. And I invite you to claim yours, to know that Christ within each of us. And in the midst of that divinity, in the midst of this human experience, in the midst of love, we settle in. We settle into a time of silence. We settle into a time of love, to a time of here and now, of presence, of knowing that God is always there in the silence, in the silence. Breathing in and breathing out. In the midst of love, in the midst of peace, in the midst of clarity, we begin the journey back to this present moment, wiggling the fingers and wiggling the toes and moistening the lips and taking in a nice deep breath and Exhaling and slowly, slowly allowing the eyes to come open and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. A star can be a sign that the light is breaking through, and a child in your arms makes the whole world seem brand new. We can embrace all the grace we've been given, stand in the light of the wonder we live in this is your gift this brand new day so take it to heart and take it on faith open your eyes and don't be afraid learn how to live cause this is your gift this brand new day this is your gift when it's hard to 
to say a prayer when you're overcome by fear and you see each day through a thousand falling tears hope takes your hand and it picks up the pieces love comes to life as we live and believe it this is your gift this brand new day so take it to heart and take it on faith open your eyes and don't be afraid learn how to live cause this is your gift this brand new This is where it starts. We'll take what God has given and we'll live it in our heart. This is your gift, this brand new day. So take it to heart and take it on faith. Open your eyes, don't be afraid, and learn how to live, cause this is your gift, this brand new David Trolley. Thank you, David Trolley. Thank you. And just because it was so good and he's David Trolley, one more time. Thank you, David Trolley. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. How do we live our life? Well, stick with me for the next five Sundays that I talk. I'm going to tell you. Honestly, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to talk about five unity principles. It's a gift, but we'll come back to that. I want to thank everybody for their service today, for Ann and uh, Don serving as chaplain. And Don will be uh, available in the breakout room for prayer after the service today, as the chaplain usually is. So thank you, Don, for your service. And to Bob McAvoy for recording and for posting uh, the, the services on our website. And if you want to catch a back service, you can always go to the website. And Bob has them all uh, logged and uh, ready to be uh, played on YouTube and set up on our YouTube channel. So thank you, Bob. And, and um, thank you, Kevin, for being the Zoom operator and for uh, all of uh, you for helping make this service and everything else for the ministry come to be. And just a couple of quick notes. So about the small booklet study that starts this week, you know, it's a come and go thing. You, you don't have to come to all of them or whatever you want to do, but you need to register to get the Zoom link. So if you're going to come to one or all three or, or the last one, register so you get the Zoom link. And then um, I really want to encourage that you print out the five principles journal and, uh, Take some notes um, on these principles. I, 
I, well, I'm going to talk about that in a, in a minute, but I, I think they're so important. And, and uh, I, I think if we can focus on them and bring them into our lives, then we can look at each day as a gift. Sometimes it's hard to do that, but unity principles can help us look at each day as a gift and have fun at game night. And I just wanted to tell you that the board, uh, almost all of the board is going to uh, a workshop in Sacramento next Saturday. Uh, I believe it's next Saturday. Yes, with Shad Groverlin and other churches in our area to talk about unity and, and what's happening in ministry uh, uh, all over the place. So we'll let you know what we find out there. And so well, let's get back to, well, David Trolley, do me a favor. Could you, can you, could you play that, the chorus to that song again for us? This is your gift, this brand new day. So take it to heart, take it on faith. Open your eyes, don't be afraid. Learn how to live, cause this is your gift, this brand new day, this is your gift. Thank you, David. Thank you. And I'm serious when I said I have a gift for you for the next five Sundays that I'm speaking. I have a gift for you, the five unity principles. And I invite you to receive this gift and take it to heart. Take it on faith to use each of them as a way to help you keep your eyes open and a way to live through this human experience. This gift is a part of every brand new day. We wake up with these gifts. They're our birthright. And if we can, the more we can claim them, the more beautiful our day will be. Reverend Kelly Isola says this about the five principles. The first principle tells us there is one presence and one power, God. What are traditionally known as the other four principles, she believes, are really practices. There are four ways, they are four ways of bringing that one presence and one power, that principle of oneness into conscious awareness and then acting from that awareness of oneness. Now I wanna say that again a little bit slower. And you, you, you've heard that before uh, from Paul Hasselbeck. It's been a while now, but he, he says that and he writes about that. And, and I like it. And I invite you to think about it. And, and what Kelly's saying is, is there's only one principle that there is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. And let's stop there. And then there are four ways of bringing that one presence and one power, that principle of oneness into conscious awareness and then acting from the awareness of oneness. And, and that's really what it's all about, folks. Uh, surviving the human experience is, is bringing that awareness of the one power and one presence into your conscious awareness and then acting from that awareness. It's hard to remember to do that. Let's talk about that. But Elizabeth Longo, who was with us a couple of weeks ago, and she said this in uh, our uh, the Mastering the Art of Presence class, and you may have heard this if you've been around Unity before, but she says the easiest way to remember the five these five statements is to get comfortable with the shorter version. So the shorter version of the five principles, excuse me, they're two, they're turned into two words each. And they are God is, I am, the law of mine action, or I, or I'm sorry, 
God is, I am, I think, I pray, and I live. So God is, God is absolute good everywhere present. I am, that human beings have a spark of divinity within them, the Christ spirit within, the oneness, that we're all connected. And I think the law of mind action, we've talked about that any number of times, we're going to talk about it again, that what you think, David Trolley sang about it in the meditation song, our thoughts are prayers. It's the truth. <laughs> Be careful what you're thinking. <laughs> Seek a higher consciousness. <laughs> what do you want in this human experience? Um, and what you think is what you get. So I think and I pray. I pray. It's through affirmative prayer that, that we communicate, that we uh, communicate with God, with ourselves, with the oneness that we all are and that we bring into manifestation. And then I live. I live. I live the truth. I have to take action. I can do all these other things, but without living, without being in the midst of the human experience and taking action, they're all for naught. So it's all about surviving the human experience. <clears throat> And so that brings up, well, why, why, you know, what's causing us not to survive the human experience? And so I want to warn you, I'm going to talk about existential angst. I think we need to talk a little bit about existential angst. And I, if you don't know what it is, I'm going to tell you, because when you stop and think about it, existential angst, uh, that's what everything relates to, why we have one presence and one power, why we seek spirituality, why we seek, well, existential angst really gets behind all of our suffering so <laughs> there we go so what is the first principle telling us then let's take a little bit of a different look at it uh, approach it from a different direction than we've looked at it before what what do we mean when we say god how, how do we define god how do you define god what do you mean when you say God? Because it's a word that we just toss around. But what does it really mean when I say that there is one presence and one power in my life? And then I name it. It's God. I'm going to call it God. I could, there's so many other names. But that word itself has connotations to it. And so we define it. That is good. Well, what does good mean? So you see, I mean, in seminary, we spent three days talking about what is God. And at the end, the lesson was we could go on and on talking about God for the whole two years of the program. And continue after that, because God's a word that means something to each of us. In Practical Metaphysics, A New Insight to Truth, Unity Books 2017, author Eric Butterworth is quoted as saying, God is spirit, present in its entirety at every point in space at the same time. That God is spirit, present in its, in its entirety, at every point in space at the same time. Well, that statement is potentially impossible to grasp, isn't it? Because the very moment we try to define the undefinable, that which is infinite, present at every point in the same time, what we call God, spirit, and allness, divine mind, principle, or whatever word we have for the ultimate reality of oneness, in doing that, in naming it, we have limited the very thing we hold as unlimited. No wonder we're confused. No wonder it's hard to stay in the center. <laughs> we're limiting the unlimited. And, and of course we do because we can't grasp the unlimited, right? <laughs> Even though it's ours to have. 
and it's infinite, so we might not get to the end of it, but the infinite is ours to have. But it's confusing because we try to define it and put limits on it. And so when we look at that statement, I, I think you really have to take into your mind and into your heart, what does that mean to you to really understand it, to make, to do your journaling, to, to really make the principles work for you. And what one of my goals for this series is to really have you embrace the principles, to make them a part of your life, to be able to know them. Even if you can't, you don't want to be able to say them in more than two words, to be able to just say the two words version and really make them a part of your life. What does it mean when we say active in the universe and in my life, that there is one presence and one power active in the universe and and in my life, that's a pretty bold statement, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say that that is a that's really uh, I mean that's like uh, when I'm in, in the midst of prayer, I say I claim my divinity, and I invite you to claim yours. Well, some of you probably are, are I don't know how many or if if there's anybody, but some of you probably wonder he wants me to claim my divinity, and he's claiming his. What's that all about? Well, we don't can't all grab that that quick, so. We don't want to go there. We're afraid to do that. So what's it mean when we say that there is one presence and one power in my life? And then we realize that we're naming it when we say God. We're naming it when we when we say God. It, we could say anything there. We could say in, in recovery, they tell you, that, and I've said this before, that if you can't get, get a, you know, find spirituality in God, call it a doorknob, find spirituality in the doorknob, whatever you want to call it, it, it it's, it's a name for the one presence and the one power. It's the name that we give when we're having existential angst. It, it's the name that settles us down when we don't have answers to what we don't know. We reach out to this presence of power for help. And we don't even have to reach out. We need to reach in because it's a part of us. And so it's everywhere present. It's available to us. We're, we're not reaching anywhere except us in this human experience. And it's there. It's all over, everywhere. And then after we've named it, we say it's, all good, that it's good. We claim it, that it's all good. I looked up all good. I mean, what does that mean, all good? That, we could talk about that for three days too. And uh, dictionary.com says all good means everything is fine, despite any indication of fears to the contrary. There is nothing to worry about. Well, that works for me. <laughs> Every, listen, every, there, everything is fine, despite any indication to the contrary. And, and that's what we're saying here, that no matter what the circumstances is in this human experience, there's one presence and one power in my life. And whatever I call them, it's telling me that everything is fine. When it, it really, in the human experience, it doesn't appear to be. But I have the power to make it fine. I have the power to know that I'm okay in every situation. And so, you know, this goes back in time. I mean, the oneness, the one God, the, 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 uh, the, the there's polytheism and atheism and monotheism and, and they come and they go, but they all go back to one presence and one power. Even when you read the definition of atheism, it, it leaves an opening. And so uh, I just, you know, the biblical reference for for the for the first principle is from Deuteronomy. So it's the Old Testament, it's one of the books of the Pentateuch. 
uh, uh, the, 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 it's the first five books of the Bible, the Jewish practice, the Torah, it's the Pentateuch and the Torah. So Deuteronomy, and there was a whole school of what's called Deuteronomists that added the, the first part of the, the first Bible, the first stories that were written. But in Deuteronomy chapter four, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, our, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. We, we, we reach out for help. And God is always there for our thoughts, our prayers, and we're thinking humans. And so what stories do we get thinking that we can reach out to that power and presence and change our thinking to make us feel safe and comfortable and okay, no matter what the situation is? On Friday, uh, the Daily Word was so wonderful because it, it, um, it made me think of the Bible verse uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Oh, hear the Lord, our uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and 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 love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul. And the daily word was, "Behold, my soul thirsts for God." Behold, my soul thirsts for God. I, I want to just read it real quick because it's it, it sums up what we do and what this principle can do for us in times of trouble or great joy. I behold the wonder of God in a world filled to overflowing with divine splendor. Whenever I fail to notice, I look to the people who love me and to the people I love and know I am blessed. I behold God everywhere and rest in the knowledge that God dwells within me always. My soul thirsts for the beauty and presence of God. I find this presence expressing through me into the world, to my beloveds, and to all beings throughout the world. As I affirm this great goodness, I remain aware that pain and disappointment may come to anyone. During challenging moments, I have faith that good will triumph in the fullness of time. All is well despite appearances of the contrary. I trust in God, and behold, I am satisfied. So God is there. There is a presence there. Remember the struggles? Re remember the suffering in this human experience? They, they, they were there in the times of, in, in, in times past, and they'll be there in time, and they're here in times present, and they'll be here in times future. Psalm 42, and you know, the Psalms in the Bible, they're, they were written as Sometimes stories, sometimes prayers, sometimes meditation, sometimes music. And Psalm 42 was particularly written for the director of music, a miscal of the sons of Korah. And it reads like this. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? We search for God, our good. Our tears have been food. Our tears have been our food for days. And when we struggle, when we have those existential questions, Thoughts pop into our mind. Thoughts pop into our mind. 
Another psalmist wrote about it. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Sometimes we feel like there's no water. Sometimes we feel like we're in the midst of a dry and weary land. And sometimes it's hard for us when we realize that we're a speck on a ball of whatever it is, a bunch of stuff in the middle of a bunch of infinity. And it freaks us out. We don't know what to do with it. And God is there. That presence and power is there. The answer is there. The all good is there. The in spite of whatever it looks like in this human experience, we're okay. We're okay. I have a bunch of other stuff I found on existential angst, but I think I'm going to pass it by. It's, it's all good, but it's a little deep, and we don't need to go any deeper after we've gone into existential angst today. So let's come out of it. Let's come out of existential angst this morning. Uh, you know, so in my research for this, I, I was looking for, you know, practical ways to get in the midst of God, the good, the all present. And I came across an article written by Reverend Ben Jameson, who, uh, who I just love. He's a very, he's a great guy. He's a CSL minister, and uh, he's the husband of Sherry Jamison, who worked at Unity for a long time and is a, is, a, is a wonderful singer and a podcaster. And so Ben said to, to be able to, to stay in the midst of these principles, to, to be able to sit, stay in the midst of one present, one's power, the, there's three tools we can use. And you're not going to be surprised. The, the first one is love. Love. God is all God is all there is, and God is unconditional love. That means we too are unconditional love. So we are at our most aligned when we are practicing loving. Love isn't just something we fall in and out of, but a practice we can consciously engage in. With people, we can practice seeing the loving essence at the core of their being. Ben says he likes to call this existence level lovely. I love you simply because you exist. I don't look at what you've said or done or what you don't do or didn't say or what I think. I blind myself to all of that and simply recognize that according to this principle, God is all there is. As such, God is present in the core of every person. I may have a hard time loving your personality, and I may be unable to love certain actions, but I can always love spirit. The good omnipotence, God itself, the one presence and one power exists as everyone. As Ben says, as we practice finding that spiritual center in each person and loving that, regardless of anything else, we align ourselves with love and bring the first unity principle into play. Ah, yes. Engage in love. Bring love. Love. Remember in the meditation we said, love surrounds me. And then I realized when I'm in the midst of love that it, it's within me. It's always there. It never goes away. It's always there. And then the second tool is introspection. Introspection. This presence tells us that good is present everywhere. In every situation, no matter what. This can be tough to swallow, especially in traumatic experiences. But notice, ah, here's the good, this is good. This is what I liked about this one. But notice that the principle doesn't say that every situation or circumstance is good. Oh, shoot. It says that there can be good had in any situation or circumstance. This good isn't guaranteed. It's up to us to seek, find, and embody that good. One more time, it's up to us, ah, I'm taking action, to seek, find, and embody that good. We can ask ourselves, what is this experience here to teach me? 
we do that? I hear us saying that a lot. What am I learning from this devastating experience? How can I grow through this? Perhaps we're being taught the art of surrender. Maybe we're being shown how powerful we are. Possibly we're looking at the neon sign pointing us to a long held judgment we're ready to release. Ah, introspection. And then the last one, the last toll. And I really want you to listen to this one because it's really important. It's compassion and forgiveness. And guess who it's about? You, me. As you're working on these principles, as you're accepting them, as you're embodying them, have compassion for yourself and forgive yourself when you forget them. I forget them. We all forget them. It's not in our nature. It is in our nature, but in this human experience, it's not our nature. We go elsewhere. We create stories. Forgive yourself when you do that. Don't beat yourself up. Love yourself. All right. That's the first principle. Let's look at yeah, wow. I see Sue Barton is exhaling. Me too. <laughs> and I I still have a bunch of slides. <laughs> so we'll look at some practices over the next time period. Jen Dickey will be here and a few other guest speakers. And thanks for being here today. <laughs>